part 18 is Google Search Console setup. When you open up your web browser and go to google.com, you obviously want to be logged in. The URL that you want to visit is google.com forward slash webmasters. You'll be prompted to uh, create a, an account or sign into your Google account. Once you're signed in, you'll come to the home page of Google Con Console and the first thing you want to do is add your uh, website. So the first version of our website we're going to add is with HTTPS and with www. So uh, Google sometimes doesn't understand, you know, which site people intend to visit. So it'll generally track each different version of your site as a different target. So let's say 100 people visit your website using yourwebsite.com, 100 people visit your website using www.yourwebsite.com, 100 people visit your website using https forward slash forward slash yourwebsite.com, and 100 people visit your website using https forward slash forward slash yourwebsite.com without the www. That should be 400 visits to your website, but Google instead will track it by default as 100 visits to four different versions of your website. So we want to add all versions of our website in the Google Search Console to combine that traffic into uh, basically one count so that Google will uh, better have a better understanding of what traffic is actually coming to your website. So add your HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www dot version of your website. And then click on add a property. All right, so before we continue to the next step, you wanna pull up your uh, dashboard of your website and you're going to install two plugins. The first plugin is called Insert Headers and Footers. The second plugin is Yoast SEO. There's a free version and there's a paid version. We'll talk more about Yoast SEO um, in another video, but we want to go over to plugins and in add new. And there's an area, there's a search bar where you can search for plugins in the plugin directory. We're going to type in insert headers and footers. Click enter. This first plugin, insert headers and footers. Um, you want to click on install now. And then once it's installed, you click activate. So if you hover over settings, you should now see the option to um, adjust the settings for the insert headers and footers plugin. We're gonna click on add new again. And now we're going to search Yoast SEO. And the first option that comes up should have a stop light icon or logo and you want to click install now and then click activate now we're going to actually deactivate this plugin in a second but um, you want to keep it activated right now we're going to go over to the settings of Yoast SEO and you should have a general tab for configuring Yoast SEO features. Uh, we don't really need to worry about features or anything right now. Your info up here, you can go ahead and add your website name and an alternate name. Choose whether this is a company or person. We're gonna choose company, the company name.
and your company logo so uh, generally I believe like 900 by 900 is a decent size for uploading your logo you want to browse for a general image of your logo if you have this logo on your computer you want to create a square version of the logo this is basically what you're going to see when you type in such as uh, let me show you an example if I go over to google.com let me close this really quick just to show you this example in real time I'm going to type in Apple and sometimes you'll see the Apple logo here um, I forget what this section is called, but actually, let me show you a better one. All right, so you've got a logo right here, Facebook. It's not actually a square logo, but uh, generally this entire square area here would be filled with the logo. I can type in Twitter, maybe. And this is where your logo will show up. So I'm going to browse for a logo and I think I have this on the desktop actually so bear with me while I while I find this logo that we created okay assets logos Assets, some originals, flatten and finish. So I know we have an image here somewhere. Um, I may have actually put it in the desktop in my website copy. Assets, flatten and finish, profiles. Okay, so this was a whole different website that we created. All right, so we can come back to this later. But this is where you're going to upload your image. Actually, you know, I can actually just create it right now. So I'm going to open up. I'm using Adobe Fireworks to do this. So if you don't have the money to hire someone to design a logo for you or to design this particular asset for you, you can use Canva, C-A-N-V-A dot com. I'm just going to create a new one at 900 by 900. And I'm going to go and find my logo to import it. So I can show you exactly what it should look like. I know exactly where it is now. Once you've created your logo or uploaded one, you're going to go and search for it wherever you've saved it. And this is a, an example of some logos you could use. Um, it can be square or it can be a general um, the shape of your actual logo. And when you upload your images, you want to put the name of your uh, business with any keywords that you use to that you're going to use to rank the site that people might search um, inside of the alt text of your um, your uploaded image. So right now we've got a URL, a title, a caption, an alt text, and a description. This is a little bit beyond the Google search console this is a little bit of extra information but if you do this now I recommend you do it now so that you won't have to come back to it later we're kind of killing a few birds with one stone here so I'm gonna change the title of this to um, third coast mobile detailing humble Texas and I'm gonna copy all of that text and paste it in the alt text and we're going to use this image so this is for seo purposes if someone searches third coast detailing or detail mobile detailing humble texas in google this image should actually come up in the images because of this alt text not necessarily because of the title but because of the alt text so this is a good seo practice i'm going to use this image 
So now we've got our image, our company name. We're going to save the changes here. For setting up the search console, I know this is kind of irrelevant, but part of this is actually relevant because using Yoast SEO, we're going to be able to paste our search console um, verification key here in the Webmasters Tools tab. Um, we also want to go ahead and go through the configuration. So we've got some um, the option to configure the plugin in general settings. So open the configuration wizard. It says welcome. If you'd like to keep you up to date, blah, 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 you can sign up. I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to click next. Please specify the environment in which this site is running. So this is a live site with real traffic staging. This is a copy of a live site. This is development. So we're going to do production next. What kind of site is this blog, website, news site, small business site? We're going to do small business site. This is a company. We've got the name of the company. We've got the logo uploaded already. The image next Facebook page URL. So let me actually go and find the Facebook page. Copy this URL and paste it here. Let's see if we have a Twitter. So again, I'm doing this for a client, but you want to go ahead and get this all out of the way if you can. Let's search Third Coast Detailing. I don't think we're on Twitter just yet, so we can leave that one empty. We've got an Instagram, so let's see what our Instagram is. Now this might all, like I said, this might all seem irrelevant, but we want to get it all out of the way. So we're gonna copy the Instagram URL. Paste it here. We don't have LinkedIn, MySpace, Pinterest. We're about to set up a YouTube channel. Um, and we haven't set up, I haven't set up a Google Plus page for this just yet. So we can go ahead and click next once we have all of our URLs in here. The post type post should be visible, pages should be visible, media should be hidden. Boom. Next. Multiple authors. Um, yes, our site will have multiple authors. So we're going to get a Google um, authorization code to authenticate. Uh, but what we're going to do actually is go over to Google Search Console first. And right now we've got the Yoast tab open for um, adding, you know, our, our Yoast settings. We've got Facebook and Twitter, but I'm going to go ahead and open a new tab and go back to our website control panel. Your domain name dot com forward slash WP dash admin. And let's see, we've got a couple of got a couple of new boxes. Latest from WordPress beginner. I'm going to disable this box and screen options. Now I'm going to go over to settings, insert headers and footers because we're going to need this here. And in the search console tab, we want to choose the alternate methods for verifying ownership of our website. And we're going to choose HTML tag. We're going to copy this meta tag. And over on your um, control panel in WordPress, we're going to paste this in the head section of the insert headers and footers plugin. I'm going to hit enter a couple times. 
and save this. So now we've got our um, meta tag for Google site verification inserted. Once it's saved, we can now click on verify. So when we add other alternate versions of our website, such as HTTPS, non-WW, etc., we do not have to verify the site again because it's already verified. And we click continue. Now we're going to go ahead and finish setting up Yoast SEO. I'm going to click this get Google authorization code. Yoast SEO would like to view blah, 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 click allow. And we're going to copy this authorization code, close this window, paste it here and click authenticate. It says choose a profile HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www dot the one we just verified in Google. We're going to choose this profile and re-authenticate with Google. It's already authenticated. And I think that the code is the same. Okay, so yeah, it's already authenticated. We can go ahead and click next. And your website name is Third Coast Detailing. Some pages will have a different title. So this section allows you to choose um, how you want your website name and the page title to be separated. Um, I usually choose this horizontal, uh, well, this vertical bar. In some cases, you might want to choose something that uh, represents the branding of your website a little better. Uh, we're just going to choose, we can choose the star, but I prefer using the horizontal bar. It makes the, the actual separation of the title and the page name a little bit shorter. I'm going to click next and boom, we've, we're all set up. You can watch this video if you want to, but I'm just going to go ahead and click close. Now I'm going to go back over to, let's see. So we don't really need to enter our uh, search console verification here, but there is one thing that we need to do. If we have premium, I believe that um, you'll have the option to grab your um, XML sitemap with the premium version, but we don't, we don't need to worry about that right now. We're gonna go over to settings and permalinks, and we're just gonna click save changes because we just added a plugin. So we're just gonna go ahead and kind of update the permalink structure. Now I'm back in search console. You want to click on site maps. Add test site map. And in the, in the box where you can enter text, you want to type sitemap.xml submit and refresh the page and it looks like we don't have a sitemap xml yet let's go and test this s-i-t-e-m-a-p dot xml and test view results we encounter an error while testing to access while trying to access your sitemap please enter your sitemap uh, make sure it follows the guidelines. So it looks like we don't have the sitemap. So generally with um, Yoast SEO, your sitemap should be automatically generated. I believe it happens when you're using the premium version of Yoast SEO. But let's see if we can figure out how to do this manually. We're going to um, go over to the security settings. Let me check enable to see if the option to generate the sitemap actually shows up here. OK, 
okay this is the advanced settings for the meta box so it doesn't look like we have the option to generate our sitemap XML using this so I recommend going ahead and, and purchasing the premium version of this plugin um, I, I planned on recommending that in a future video when we talk about Yoast SEO if you want to go ahead and get the premium version of this plugin it's definitely recommended uh, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and, and upload the premium version of the plugin now and that's gonna take me just a second so I'm gonna go to plugins I've already got the plugin on my computer I'll go to add new so let's say you download it Yoast SEO the premium version we're gonna go to upload plugin choose plugin file and I'm gonna browse for my plugin You want to make sure that it is uh, the zipped version of the plugin itself that you're uploading into WordPress. So when you download the plugin, the premium version, you'll install the zipped file. You don't have to unzip it. So I'm going to go ahead and activate the plugin. And it'll automatically deactivate the non premium version. So if I go over to SEO, and in the SEO tab, we'll have the XML sitemaps show up now. The XML sitemap functionality is enabled by default. We're just gonna click Save Changes here. And I'm gonna click on XML sitemap to see if it opens in a new window. Boom, there it is. Now I can go back to Settings, Permalinks, and we're gonna update the permalink structure one more time. So we've got our sitemap now and we can retest. I'm going to close this test. I'm going to add test sitemap. We're going to go sitemap.xml test view results. We encountered an error. So let's see what our error is. So you might run into something like this as well. So it's actually sitemap underscore index.xml. Either that or it's page dash sitemap.xml. Okay, yeah, so that's it. Page dash sitemap.xml. So generally it's sitemap.xml. In our case, it's page-sitemap.xml. I think you can go in and update this structure um, in FTP to change the name of this file. But in our case, the issue was the name of the file is not sitemap.xml. It's page-sitemap.xml. So I'm going to copy this text. I'm going to go back over to Search Console, close the test. I'm actually going to delete this sitemap.xml and I'm going to add our newly updated file name which is page-sitemap.xml so in your case you might successfully have sitemap.xml in your website with Yoast SEO the newer version I guess they changed the name to page-sitemap so we're going to test this view test results and it shows that we have three submitted web pages and two images submitted no errors found so we can close the test add this the same uh, text page dash sitemap.xml and submit refresh the page and now we've got our sitemap working so just to resolve the issue for some of you who might be running into a problem when you go to submit this sitemap um, I just did this in real time and got it to work generally you would have to enter sitemap.xml but try page dash sitemap or click on the Yoast SEO XML sitemap button in SEO premium and then click on this link that shows up in the XML sitemap page this is the actual sitemap and then the sitemap should show you all the links that are on your website 
So we're gonna come back to this video later when we actually finish building out our website to update our sitemap. So now that you've got your sitemap, the purpose of Google um, Search Console, which is Webmasters, is to make sure your site is crawled and indexed properly by Google. Once you've verified your site, we're gonna go and add the other, other versions of our website. So we're gonna go back to the Search Console. We're gonna click on Add a Property. Now we're going to type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash www dot. So we, we set our website up with HTTPS with an SSL certificate. So the first version of our site we actually um, added as a property was HTTP with www. Now we're adding HTTP. I'm sorry, the first version was HTTPS with www. Now we're adding HTTP with www. We're gonna click add. We're gonna go ahead and click, uh, I'm not a robot if you have to verify, and then we're gonna click verify because we've already verified using the alternate method with HTML tag. So just click verify, it'll automatically verify it for you. Actually choose your verification method, HTML tag, verify. Click on continue. We're gonna go ahead and submit a sitemap again. So click on sitemaps, add test sitemap. We're gonna go ahead and paste page-sitemap.xml. Click submit. We don't necessarily have to test it because we know it works. Now we're gonna go back to search console again. We're gonna add a property. Now it's non HTTP, non HTTPS. We're going to just do www. Actually, we're just going to do HTTP, I'm sorry, colon, forward slash, forward slash, third coast detailing.com. So, whatever your domain is, minus www. We're going to do the HTTP and the HTTPS version of this. Add alternate methods. HTML tag, verify, continue, sitemaps, add test, we're going to paste that same line of text, submit, refresh the page, now we're going to go back to search console, add a property, HTTPS, colon, forward slash, forward slash, none, www. Add alternate methods, HTML tag, verify, continue, sitemaps, add, paste, submit, refresh, and boom. Now if we go back to our search console, We've got four properties, which are which is actually one website. Okay, four properties. So Google usually tracks traffic from this site, from this site, or to this site, to this site, to this site, to this site as individual website visits. But we want to combine all of these, so we've we've added all of these properties. The next thing that you want to do is add a preferred domain. So. We're going to go to all messages. Let's see, improve the search result presence of, you can click either one of these. We're just gonna click the HTTPS www version. We're gonna click that. And we're gonna click on part one we've done already. We've added all versions of our site. HTTPS, HTTP, www, and non www. We're gonna add, now we're gonna do number two, which is select your preferred version. We're gonna set preferred version. And we're gonna do display URLs as www. And then we're gonna click save. Awesome, so the next thing we need to do is click on this gear icon. We need to go down to site settings. 
and then actually yeah we, we pretty much just did that this is the part where we set the preferred domain so if you want people to visit um, your website under non www you'd select display URLs as using the non www option but I usually prefer www we want to go on to crawl and fetch as Google actually no we'll, we'll do let's see crawl robots.txt tester so let's click on this robots tester zero errors zero warnings so far uh, thirdcoastdetailing.com let's just click on test it says allowed awesome now we want to click on crawl under crawl we want to click on fetch as Google and we want to click fetch or fetch and render the status is pending so this should be I believe this will be updated in real time there it is complete and then we want to click on let's see there should be an option to submit to index I'm gonna click on this request indexing okay you should too. click I'm not a robot select all images with a skyscraper it's kind of a skyscraper verify and then we want to choose the second option crawl this URL and its direct links go all right so the indexing has been requested again this is our this is the first iteration of setting up Google search console completely um, when we finish designing our website we're gonna go back and complete some of these steps a second time we've already got the site added as a property for each version of our site now recrawling and resubmitting the retesting and submitting the site URL or the site map is something that we have to do again once the site is finished because we're planning on adding new pages so now you should be all set with Google Search Console.